Shalawan, brothers and sisters. Shalawan. Hey, first and foremost, I want to turn to the east and give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shah, Bahashem, Rikakadash. I want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. And salutation to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing his word in all truth and sincerity, and the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the land wherever he goeth. Yes, brothers and sisters, this one's called Everything is on course. Uh, according to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shah's word, man. You know, uh, because prophecy is being fulfilled right now. We're bringing out this uh, little short epistle, man, uh, you know, to remind, you know, remind the brother and remind the body, hey, keep the faith, be strong, man, and be rejoice, ye heavens. Okay, rejoice, because these are the times that we've been looking for. Uh, for all these prophecies to just uh, start for being fulfilled right in front of our faces, we are living prophecy as, as, you know, as the scripture has said, actually, you know, um, so I'm, I'm sure maybe, maybe many of you have already seen this video, but I'm going to, I'm going to marry this video with another video that I've, uh, that through the spirit of stumble, stumble across. Um, it's a video of this, uh, a Moab actually breaking uh, you know uh, coming to the understanding that hey there is no such like you know just like the elders and apostles are bringing out and you know because <clears throat> they're bringing they're finding out this information from the elders apostle great millstone and the other brothers bringing out this 100 percent truth through the spirit and the power of yahweh shima and shai uh but it's kind of cool to just um you know to see the other nations uh living out the prophecies that they're gonna start to realize who this devil really is okay so uh, we're gonna i'm gonna play this video and then play some of the other video toward the end of of, of, of these epistle of this epistle but i'm also gonna put them both uh in the bottom of the description box if y'all want to just watch them yourself and uh, i got this video from another brother I'll, I'll just cut out this part of the man um you know and blowed it up of esau you know confessing that he is esau and it's very beautiful it's very spiritual so all praises to you how about shimei Shah for that um yeah let's let's bring out a, let's bring out a scripture this is isaiah chapter 46 verse 10 declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and i will do all my pleasure those are the words of the creator of the universe saying hey man he's, he's already declared the end from the beginning he's already chosen uh the victor you know he's got this whole thing this whole thing played out and wrapped up you know the way it should be according to his word so we're just living it and watching it happen and praising you how about shima the whole way the whole way brothers and sisters um i'm gonna play this video real quick let's just watch it and then we'll kind of come back and read uh one more one more scripture okay it's, it's gonna be a nice short epistle hey guys this is uh josh with call the tenderfoot i want to talk to you guys today about esau from the bible you know a lot of times we think about uh, the whole story of Jacob and Esau and we, we look at Jacob mainly um, in the Bible but as I was sitting there I felt like God was telling me that there's a lot that I can learn from Esau you know um, you know one, one of the things that I learned from Esau was the fact that you know he he knew who he was you know a lot of times in this day and age we we have these people out there that want to just kind of climb the corporate ladder and you know rise to the next level of power and, and stuff like that but you sit there and you look at Esau and he knew he was you know they talk about him being a man of the open country or the open field and in the Bible and, and you sit there and go you know he knew he knew he was a country boy and a, and a hunter and not only that but it talks about like how much of a skilled hunter he was and um if if you're any if anyone has done any hunting you know that in order to be called a skilled hunter it means that you've taken time and dedicated your life to uh kind of perfecting the the ways of becoming a hunter and you know the discipline that it takes and, and the work ethic that it takes to become a skillful hunter so you sit there and you look at Esau and, and God kind of talks I, I feel like in the Bible he talks 
about a lot of the good things that Esau has, like his his work ethic, his drive to to become, you know, a good skilled hunter. Uh, another thing that I I can't help but sit there and and look at is, um, you know, he did have a good work ethic. It talks about later on how Jacob comes back because he's he's uh, afraid of his older brother Esau because he stole he stole the birthright and you know by this time there had been time that had passed but basically by the time it comes back around you know Esau had uh, taken his, his livestock and multiplied it greatly and basically it talks about how there's he's over 400 men basically when when they uh, come to meet with Jacob and stuff and so I mean to have 400 men knows I mean it shows that you have a work ethic and you have leadership qualities and you know the ability to take something and make it multiply and so I mean if you sit there and, and look at Esau and there's a lot of good stuff like work ethic and becoming a skilled hunter and just getting out in the outdoors you know I think another thing that Esau tells us is, you know, you sit there and you look at his life and he knew who he was. He wasn't he wasn't someone who was fake. He he knew who he was as a person. He knew what his values were and and yeah, he was passionate and he became angry when Jacob stole from him, but at the end of the day or at the end of the day, I think he realized that you know, his relationship with his family is the most important. Um, so for him to be able to forgive Jacob for basically stealing his entire inheritance shows that he knows, you know, that relationships are the most important thing of people. Money and power can come for those that want it, but at the end of the day, you know, how you treat people, the love that you have in your heart, that's what matters. And so uh, those are just a couple small things that I've been thinking about as I looked at the story of Jacob and Esau. And uh, hopefully this encourages you. Um, right now I'm out in the rain. Probably not going to have a turkey come in at all because it's raining. Um, but also I'm doing this video, so it's probably a little too loud. But This is the book of Genesis chapter 25. Verse 22 And the children struggled together within her And she said If it be so why am I thus And she went to inquire of the Lord And the Lord said unto her Two nations are in thy womb And two manner of people Shall be separated from their bowels Two nations So it's two different people Jacob and Esau Esau is the Caucasian race The Edomites And Jacob is us the so-called Negro. So it says, uh, two and two manner of people shall be separated from their bowels, and one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. So one people shall be stronger than the other people. That is, Jacob is stronger than Esau. You see that in sports and, and in the workplace as well. They, even though they want to spin it and make it sound like uh, we are inferior, but in fact, the fact of the matter is we're not. And the elder shall serve the younger. Who came out first? Esau. So he is bound by these scriptures to serve us. And that's what's going to happen in the kingdom of heaven. And when her days to be delivered were fulfilled, behold, there were twins in her womb. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. So he came out red because his skin, I'm sorry, his, his blood shows forth through his skin. I got that from Brother Malcolm. I love the way he say that. So yeah, that's why he's he's red. And, and thus, as you can see watching this second video with that Moabite, he's going to be like, hey, there's I don't see no white people. I don't see no black people. I see pink and red. And that's just exactly what Brother Malcolm will be bringing out all day long, brothers. And, and us too. The rest of the, the body of, uh, of Yahweh Shem Shai, The elders and apostles of Great Millstone and the other brothers on down. So, and the first came out red all over. So this is Genesis chapter 25, verse 25. And the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And they called his name Esau. And after that came his brother out. And he took and his hand took hold of Esau's heel and his name was called Jacob and Isaac was three score years old when she bare them now look we're going to jump over brothers and sisters to uh, Genesis chapter 27 verse 41 
And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing wherein his father blessed him. That's right, because we have the break we, we have the birthrights. We have everything, man. That's what uh that's what is ordained to us because the Lord has already declared these things from the beginning. You know what I'm talking about? So it's it's a beautiful thing that we are we are uh going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. Let's read this again. This is uh, Genesis chapter 27, verse 41. And Esau hated Jacob because of the blessing, wherein his father blessed him. And Esau said in his heart, The days of mourning for my father are at hand. Then will I slay my brother Jacob. And that's what you see happening um, throughout history right until this very day. That Esau, Edom, the Caucasian race, hates you, so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. And he wants to slay you. Okay, and that's all that's happening. That's that's the uh, that's hatred from birth. It was it was already declared that they're gonna be your enemy. Okay, and that's 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 just the bottom line. And it's just nice to see this prophecy being fulfilled. That you know we know the truth, and there's gonna be a few Edomites that come into the understanding that they are actually the Edomites, and this is proof of it right now. The elites of the Caucasian race they already know. Because they're the devil. It's their agenda that they're pushing forth through the, through the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahushai, of course. Um, and now, we're going to get this one more scripture, brothers and sisters, and then we're going to move on to the second video, okay? This is uh, in the book of Romans. Uh huh. Chapter 9, verse 9. For this is the word of promise. At this time will I come and Sarah shall have a son. We're going right back to the same. So this is the same uh, story that we, we just read about. And not only this, but when Rebecca also have conceived by one, even by our father Isaac. For the children being not yet born, neither having, having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. So it says right here. That, hey, the children not even being yet born, you know what I'm saying? Haven't done any good or evil that the purpose of the of the Lord, Yahweh Hashem El Shai, according to election, might stand, not of works, but of him that calleth. Because what? The Lord has declared these things from the beginning. It was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. There we go again. So Esau is bound by the power of and the spirit of Yahweh Shimei Asha by his word that he will serve us in the kingdom of heaven. It, it was said unto her, the elder shall serve the younger. And as it, as it is written, Jacob have I love. So the Lord said he love us, the so-called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. But Esau have I hated. So there you go. He said he hates Esau, the Caucasian race. All right. What shall we say then? Is there any unrighteousness with Yahweh Shimei Asha? God forbid. For he said to Moses, I will have mercy on whom I will have mercy, and I will have compassion on whom I will have compassion. And see, the, this, and this, and also this video right here shows when that man's speaking, that he's accepted that the will of God, you know, he, he, he can't, he can't, he can't fight with the Lord. He's accepted his fate. He's saying, yeah, man, you know what? Esau's okay. You know, we, we got a fair shake here. We, we were able to run this world for a while, you know, and do the things that we do. You know, now it's time to wrap it up, basically. Okay? Because the Lord said he was going to have mercy on whom he want to have mercy on. Okay? And compassion on whom I will have compassion on. This is verse, so this is Romans chapter 9, verse 16. So then, it is not of him that willeth, nor of him that runneth, but of God that showeth mercy. For the scripture said unto Pharaoh, even for this same purpose, have I risen thee up, that I might show my power in thee, and that my name might be declared throughout all the earth. And that goes right back to Ecclesiastes, that there's nothing new under the sun. So everything uh, continues to go back around in circles. You know, there's a cycle of things. So just as the Lord raised up Pharaoh and gave him all that might and power, and then put him over the children of Israel, just so he could tear him down and destroy Pharaoh's kingdom, so that the whole earth would know that the Lord ruleth in heaven and in earth. So therefore, in this present time, he's going to do the same thing. He's, he has risen up Esau Edom, the kingdom of Esau Edom. Okay, the Caucasian race who running, who's running the world in all wickedness right now. 
and he's put them over the children of Israel yet again from the transatlantic slave trade until now so he can tear them down and destroy their wicked kingdom all right it's beautiful right let's read that again this so this is Romans chapter 9 verse 17 for the scripture said unto Pharaoh even for this same purpose have I raised thee up that I might show my power in thee and that my name might be declared throughout all of the earth therefore hath he mercy on whom he will have mercy and whom he will harden hardeneth so he's hardening the uh, wicked elites of this world that's running this world making them do his will you know what I'm saying? Making them uh, start to get 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 this uh, RFID chip ready, you know, to, to, to spread forth this, this mark of the beast. Okay? Making them about to bring down, because he is the sword to bring down the hammer on the two-thirds of the children of Israel that don't want to repent. <clears throat> Got everybody running around here wearing masks, <clears throat> talking about some, <clears throat> some flu, flu type uh, virus that's uh, supposedly killing everybody. You know, so you got everybody wearing masks that don't actually help or prevent anything. Looking like some damn fools out here. Afraid for your lives. Huh? So he's hardening Esau Edom to do all these things. Thou wilt say then unto me, this is verse 19. Why does he yet find fault? For who have resisted his will? Nay, but O man, who art thou that replies against God? Shall the thing that formed say to him that formed it, Why hast thou made me thus? Have not the potter power over the clay? Or the same lump to make one vessel unto honor, which is us, the so-called Negro, that's Jacob, and another unto dishonor, which is who? Esau Edom, the Caucasian race. What if Yahweh Hashem Shai willing to show his wrath and to make his power known, endure with much long suffering the vessels of wrath fitted to destruction, you know, and and that he might make known the riches of his glory on the vessels of mercy. That's us who is who is to inherit the kingdom of heaven, which he had for a uh, for prepared unto glory, because he declared the end from the beginning. Even us, that's us, Jacob, the so-called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native American and Indians, whom he hath called not of the Jews only but also of the Gentiles not of the Jews only the so-called Negro uh, that's the African Americans the so-called West Indians and uh, the Haitians the Levites but also the Gentiles the so-called Spanish and Native American Indians are the Gentiles who don't know that they're Israelites all these other people that don't know that the Israelites through the seed line of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right. So hey, that that yeah, that was a, that was that was a nice that was that was really nice to bring that pistol out. We're gonna watch this second video of this new Moabite. Just now, it's a twelve-minute video, but I'm I'm only gonna play like maybe I'm gonna skip it because I like the way he's I like the way he's like comparing it to a house. Like if he wanted to paint a house and he wanted to paint the house white. Then he, you'll see it, man. I'm going to play just a little bit of each clip if he's going to paint a white house or a black house, okay? Uh, and then I'm going to, like I said, I'm going to put them both in the description box. All right? And then we're going to come back after the video, read one or two more scriptures, and just wrap it up, man. So all praise to you. How about you, Shai? Hi, guys. Um, I wanted to make this special video about black and white people that... There's actually no white person that's actually white or black person that's actually black. Um, let me tell you my story. When I was, um, I grew up in South Korea. Um, I came here in 1989 when I was nine years old. And um, I come from a country back then. Korea was pretty much 99.999% Korean. I've actually never seen a black person or a white person until I landed in at the airport in 1989 or maybe at the airport when I was going there um so when I first came here I heard about the black and white people and to me as a Korean kid nine years old never seen white or black people um, Koreans never used the term or white black people so much um, as a color so much 
But when I came here, people refer to white people to white, you know, white people and black people. And it just occurred to me that was really weird. Because to me, back then, I, I saw white people and they weren't white. To me, white was a um, color of actual white. White. This is white. Black was like this. Black. To me, white people look like sort of pinkish, orange. Um, they actually look very similar to light-skinned Korean people. I mean, Koreans can become super white if they don't get any sunlight, and they can become very tanned. I would say right now I'm sort of in the middle. Um, so anyway, it was a culture shock. And um, it took me quite a while to sort of train my brain. Okay, white people are people that look like sort of very light-skinned, but they're not really white. They're like pink or orange. And black people are not really black, but they're really dark brown or light brown. They sort of look like very tan Korean people. All right. To me, they just look Korean. <laughs> anyway, to illustrate this point of how your brain thinks, um, I want to I wanna really um, change the world, change how you think. And I just want to make this special video. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and type white people on Google. And I'm going to go ahead and find the most whitest person right here, right? Um, this is white, this, this background. Does that look white? That's pink. Does that look white? That looks slightly orange to me. Um, so that's how I thought, all right? And I think this white and black term is not relevant um, for so something like people of color. We're all people of color. In fact, look at this image here. And I'm going to show you none of these people are actually white person. And let me go ahead and copy this. This is a very good example of white people. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my Photoshop and go ahead and copy this image. And I'm going to actually grab the colors off uh, their faces here. All right, let's go find the whitest person. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my tool here. Um, and where is it? Uh, eyedropper tool. This will, this will pick up the color. So I'm gonna find find the whitest part of this woman's face, and you can see it picks up this color. And I'm gonna go ahead and I got this little house here. For example, if you wanted to paint your house white, you want it white. You want it white. But um, if you colored it ac according to this person's color. I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. And I'm going to go ahead and do that. Does that look like a white house? That looks sort of beige or something like that. Let's go ahead and grab another image here. Let's go ahead and kind of grab this, this girl here. She's sort of tanned. Grab this, this part of it. And I'm going to go ahead and um, go back to my house and color this color according to that color what color is that that looks sort of you know pinkish yellowish well that's definitely not white in fact none of these people are actually white people all right <laughs> now let's go actually go go um let's actually go find another example of super white well let's go find pale white people and this has been going on in Western countries, especially in America, um, classifying white people. Um, okay, this guy looks very white. He must be white. All right. So I'm going to grab this image. Um, and I'm going to go and paste it in here. And then I'm going to actually grab, actually, this, this could be due to the lighting. But even this guy, let me go ahead and paint it is this color. She's slightly pink. All right. If you told me to paint my house in white, this would not be white. You see the point here? <laughs> um, let's go look at Trump. All right. Let's 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 actually look at Trump just, just for the hell of it here. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And um, let me actually move this guy here. And let's actually find out. Let's let's actually just get this his balls here, right here, cheek. 
And I'm going to go and copy it in here. What color is Trump? Trump is sort of pinkish, pinkish orange. Yeah, something like that. All right, um, let me go ahead and now go look for some black people. Very dark black. Well, just go black people, all right? So to me, black people are not black. Let's go ahead and look at Michael Jordan here. Let me copy that in here. And go ahead and copy the blackest part here. I mean, that's the shadow. So let me go ahead and find the blackest part where there's actually light. Something like here. All right. And I'm going to go ahead and fill it in. All right. That's still not black. If you told me to paint my house in black in um, the color of Michael Jordan's cheek, you would still get very dark, dark brown. You see the point here? No one's actually black. There's actually no way humanly possible that you can actually be black. Hey, remember that song, Whoop, There It Is? Well, Whoop, There It Is. Now, <laughs> the brothers, the elders of Apostle Great Millstone, and the other brothers on down on the umbrella have been bringing this out, you know, for a very, 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 very long time. But, hey, the Lord is, hey, that, that's, hey, that's going to bring, hey, let's, let's get this scripture right here. Let's get the uh, second, second, uh, where is it? Second Edra, chapter six, verse 28. Perfect for this. As for faith. It shall flourish. Now we have faith in Yahweh Hashem Al Shah. That's so called Negro, Hispanics, and Native American Indians, the, the 144 hopeful elect and one third of Israel. We we believe in the Lord wholeheartedly. As for faith, it shall flourish. Corruption shall be overcome, and the truth, that's what's going on right now, which have been so long without fruit, shall be declared, man. So after, you know, bringing out the truth, you know, so long, it cannot be hid no more. You know, it's just obvious that these people are Esau, Edom, and we are the lost 12 tribes of Israel, man. Based on the relics, um, based on the transatlantic slave trade, based on the curses, based on the word of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, man. This is going to be the last scripture right here. This is the book of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come. What day? The return of Yahweh Hashem al the return of the Lord, to pass judgment on this wicked kingdom that's ran in all wickedness, contrary to the word of the Lord. Except there come a falling away first. The falling away has happened. Because we, we are just now coming back, waking up to the understanding that we are the Israelites. Before, we didn't know. We thought we were some so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American Indians. That's the, So we had the falling away. And that man of sin be revealed. The man of sin has been revealed right now. The son of perdition. We've been bringing it out. And now these other nations are beginning to see that, hey, these Caucasian people are the devil that the Bible speaks of. They are Esau, Edom. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, except there come a falling away first, and that man of sin be revealed, the son of, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, going contrary to the word of the Lord, man, up and down, left and right, or that is worship, or so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God, and he's got the, the proof is all around the world, where he's putting up this false... False image of, of the Messiah saying that he is the Christ. You know, this Caucasian man. When in, in Revelation chapter 1, verse 14, it tells you he's got woolly hair and skin of bronze. Okay? Now he's and then he put with that picture of Michelangelo and the finger touching the, the man, he's got the, the most high, God Almighty, as a Caucasian man as well. Which is all lies, man. Blaspheme. Who opposes and exalts himself above this? So this is Second Thessalonians chapter two verse four. Who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things, and now ye know that 
what withholding that he might be revealed in his time and he's been revealed right now for the mystery of iniquity doth already work only he who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way so the Lord is gonna let this devil do what he's supposed to do because he's already declared the end from the beginning until the Lord come to take him out of the way and then shall that wicked be revealed these wicked devils Esau Edom be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and the Lord is consuming them with the spirit of his mouth with this truth on the four corners of the earth then shall the end come so this is verse 8 again and then shall that wicked be revealed whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming that's when he's gonna take him out of the way with those nuclear warheads in the in the, in the end of World War three huh that's coming up very shortly even him whose coming is after the workings of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved so for all y'all non-believers out there that still don't want to believe that this man is Esau Edom and we are the lost 12 tribes of Israel if you are a so-called Negro Hispanics and Native American Indians it would behoove you to repent and seek the truth now while the gates of mercy are still open because they're about to implement martial law upon you they're about to imp implement this this forced vaccines and the implementation of the RFID chip which is the mark of the beast and if you receive that mark of the beast you are damned because the Lord already said don't take that mark of the beast Let's see, uh, this is the book of, just to, just to clear that up, this is the book of Revelation chapter 14, verse 9. And the third angel followed him, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, that is the RFID chip, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of Yahweh Shema Shai, which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation, and he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. So you're going to be stuck here in Babylon the Great, aka America, when those nuclear warheads uh, are shot forth over here, and you will not be um, saved out of it. That we're hoping to be saved up out of it. We're hoping to be part of that number, the 144 hopefully elect and the one third of Israel who will believe these words and repent to the Lord and be healed, man. So with that, hope this was edifying. And uh, hey, brothers and sisters, we're almost out of here. Everything is on its course according to the word of Yahweh Shem So we're going to give all honors and praises to Yahweh, Baha Shem, Yahweh Shah, Baha Shem, the Kakadash. I'm going to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for bringing out the 100% truth and keeping it real. Salutations to the 144 hopeful elect of Israel who's pushing his word in all truth and sincerity. And the one third of Israel who believe in the word and follow the Lamb wherever he goes. Shalom Israel!